Delighted to say football writer with The Athletic, Cuivo O'Neill joins us. Morning, Cuivo. Good morning. Liverpool City, obviously, the uh, really the only thing we want to talk to you about this morning. Uh, it's live and off the ball. Nathan and Kenny, Mutley and Jeff going to take it away from half past four on Sunday coming. Uh, just looking at the, the build-up to it, uh, Cuivo, so Brentford and Porto for City feels like, uh, for Liverpool, I should say, feels like a better run than uh, Chelsea PSG. So is it advantage Liverpool before we even begin here? I mean, I don't know, considering Brentford gave Liverpool a good run for the money, didn't they, uh, at the weekend? I think uh, they really tested Liverpool in a way no team really have this season or um, and, and they got to them a little bit. Um, Liverpool looked a little bit a little bit scruffy around the edges, I guess, on, on Saturday night. Uh, they recovered from that, obviously, um, against Paul, so which is, you know, a place Liverpool have enjoyed going, as we know, over the past few seasons. And, you know, to score five goals with ease, Curtis Jones, outstanding man of the match performance, Mo Salah, what more can we say? He's um, scored in eight consecutive games now. He's just on a ridiculous run of form. He's, you know, I've been saying since the Norwich game at the start of the season, he looks different than he's ever looked. He's just got this extra edge. And I feel like this, he could go on and surpass his, his own goal record. I mean, he's already beaten his, his own record at the minute. So I think, um, you know, he, he just, he keeps just, yeah, amazing us all. So Liverpool have got a real, a real leader. In him, obviously, Van Dijk's back, um, which has been, you know, massive for Liverpool, massive for Allison, massive for the back line. Obviously, Trent Alexander-Arnold won't um, be playing on Sunday after he picked up a muscle injury. James Milner will will fall into that role, um, age 35, and just playing wherever Klopp needs him, um, you know, sets the tone, I think, for, for this Liverpool team. But, yeah, I think a perfect midweek for them. And probably a perfect weekend in a way because you know that you know they can't just rest on the laurels here against any side, let alone a newly promoted team. So you know I think that will give them the hunger that they need in the same way you know City beating Chelsea will give them that, and also getting uh, beat by uh, PSG in midweek as well. You mentioned Mo Salah there. Why is he different this season? Why is he even better than his amazing best that we've seen over the last couple of seasons? I, could, I, don't, I don't know what to what to really say. He just he looks different. He's, he's not particularly. I don't know if he's doing anything different in terms of diet or fitness. You know, he's got an incredible fitness record anyway. As we know, he he rarely misses games. Um, he, he just looks like all of the years before, but just this just just something like a special little spark to him. You know, when he picks up the ball, you feel like something magic's gonna happen. I don't know whether maybe it's because fans are back in stadiums and he is a real performer. Maybe it's something to do with that, perhaps. And, you know, there's, there's no better place to do that at Anfield on Sunday when, obviously, Manchester City uh, beat Liverpool there last season with no fans in the ground. You know, fans are back in the ground. So Liverpool want to start up that record, which, which they lost last season of you know, being unbeaten against Man City at Anfield for such a long time. You know, Pep struggled, his teams have struggled there. Man City teams have struggled there in the past. Obviously, last season they didn't. Um, they ran riot in the end. But, you know, I think coming back to Salah, he, he just he looks different in a really, really good way. And it's quite scary probably for the rest of the league that, you know, other forwards are maybe scoring and dropping off. He just looks like he's going to score in every single game. Yeah, uh, it's a powerful uh, tool to have. Karen Carney, an interesting piece in The Guardian during the week, Quiva, she was talking about that City relentless press, particularly against the top teams. And that was sort of the context maybe to the question I asked at the top in relation to um, Chelsea and PSG, particularly that relentless press against them over that period of time. Like, it's the sort of thing that could potentially, with that number of games against that level of team over that short period of time, potentially over the last 20 minutes, could really play into Liverpool's hands. Yeah, I think so. I mean, these games against Man City and Liverpool, you always feel like they're almost worn in the first 15 minutes, whoever sets the tone and, and runs out the best and presses the best. And I do think we're coming into probably the time when these teams are actually, haven't seen a bit of City against PSG and Chelsea and Liverpool against Brentford and Paul. So I feel like these teams are pressing as good as they have done in seasons before. They look back to the best in terms of, you know, um, you know, hunting in packs all over the pitch. 
So I feel like we're coming into a perfect weekend for that to be on display. And I guess it's head to head who's going to be the winner. And you do feel like in the press and stakes, that'll be one of the big sort of key things to look for. I do think it does take a little bit out the legs, doesn't it? And I guess, you know, both teams have had away trips um, in the week. So I guess, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how much energy they've got. But I do feel like it's definitely the, the first half who, who can get out the blocks quicker. And then obviously, you know, as the game goes on, who's going to tire first and who's going to give up the press a little bit. So I think it's going to be a really interesting game. One of, one of maybe the best um, between Man City and Liverpool. Now I've said that's probably going to be nil-nil. So <laughs> I'll, I'll shoot up. <laughs> I, I don't think uh, the one all last year at the Etihad was, was a classic from memory, but it's a game that's been brought up quite a bit this week because in that fixture, Jurgen Klopp, did go with uh, his four attackers. He started uh, on the day with with his four attackers on the pitch at once. There does seem to be some thought after Firmino's brace the other night that possibly Klopp could do the same thing this Sunday. What do you reckon yourself? Yeah, I've got a feeling Firmino might just nip in ahead of Jota just because Jota's performance in the week didn't... You know, he really needed a goal to sort of cap off uh, what was not his his best game, even though Liverpool were relentless. You know, he he was really good, but he just wasn't... You know, to the level maybe we've seen from him in previous games. I mean, his header against uh, Brentford was phenomenal. Um, you know, he, he only looks a little, but to get up the way he did to meet Jordan Henderson's cross was just superb. Um, so he's definitely got goals in him. Um, whether Klopp might not want to put all of his attackers on the pitch, I'm, I'm not entirely sure what he's going to go with. As you said, he did it last season, obviously didn't, didn't quite work out for Liverpool. So whether he, you know, is a bit more reserved and goes back to that, you know, relying front three of, of years before. You know, Firmino looks to be coming into a, a good little run of form. Obviously, he had that injury, which kind of disrupted it a little bit. But, you know, he's been such an integral and important player for Liverpool. And he really does love games against Man- Manchester City. So, you'd expect him to, you know, put in a, a good performance. But again, it would not surprise me to see him left out at all um, um, and Jossa to start ahead of him. But, it, yeah, I think... I've just got a feeling for Firmino um, at the minute. Yeah, the more experienced player maybe is uh, wins the day on it. The, the, uh, you mentioned the Brentford game earlier on, the 3-3. Uh, Klopp was saying afterwards that Liverpool had played brilliant football but struggle against Brentford's long balls. Like That could have been, as can be the case with managers after games, a bit of a dig, obviously, at the opposition. Or it could be a bit of an insight and like it would nearly feel like an insult to a team like Manchester City to suggest that uh, going long is, um, is, a, is a, any plan, never mind about a plan A. But is that the sort of uh, credible way for a team, even like City, to get at this Liverpool side? I think so. And I do think that last season, you know, when Liverpool had that run of six defeats on the bounce at Anfield and, you know, January to March was just dismal, really. Obviously, they'd lost so many defenders, all of the defenders but and midfielders were playing in defence. But I don't think that was... Um, I think then the high line, Liverpool hold, sort of struggled a bit more and was exposed more. Obviously, with Van Dijk back, sort of being the leader and, and dictating the line and Alisson in there as well, looking back to his best. I do I do feel like still, you know, it's something that can be got out if teams do it right, but it's just worked so well for Liverpool, you know, with risk comes the greatest reward. And I do think Liverpool themselves have some, you know, Van Dijk in particular, it will hit the odd long ball over the top or a diagonal and, and get Liverpool in behind Jordan Henderson. We, we've seen Fabinho do it as well, you know. So it's it's not just um, other teams that, that can do it. Liverpool can do this as well. But I do think that's a way Man City will potentially try and get at Liverpool on the break, perhaps. But I do think, you know, this is one that's going to be uh, won in the, in the pressing game rather than balls over the top but yeah I think it's something that Liverpool have been caught out at in the past but uh, we'll see what, what City can produce on Sunday. And what happens with that? Um, Trent Alexander-Arnold looks as a, is out um, Grealish and Joe Cancelo seems to be a thing that's developing nicely for City particularly down that, that left hand side how do you see that uh, How do you see that dynamic panning, panning out in his absence? Yeah, I mean, well, James Milner will be there only and he'll be keen after, I think, you know, his performance against Crystal Palace at a full-back was, was brilliant and obviously he held off Wilfred Sahari who's one of the trickiest players in the league. So he'll have the same, you know, similar job to do with Jack Grealish who's looked pretty 
good uh, since he joined Manchester City. He looks like it's taken his game up to another level. Um, Joe Cancelo as well, we know his qualities. He, he can play all over the pitch. And um, I think, you know, there might be times when Milner playing there might be a good thing defensively. He's just sometimes got that little bit of extra now. He, he's, he's great at winning fouls. Milner, I don't think he gets enough credit for that, you know, hold, uh, breaking the game up a little bit. Um, I think, you know, Liverpool fans will be hoping he, he can do a job with his experience and, you know, sort of keep Jack Grealish quiet. Uh, I guess we'll have to see what happens there because we know what an incredibly gifted player he is. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how how the game goes. And I do think that's one of the sort of talking points um, going into the weekend, uh, with, obviously with Alexander-Arnold missing with that muscle injury. Yeah, you mentioned Curtis Jones a bit earlier on and he's been rightly lauded obviously after the game during the week. He's in there, I think everybody accepts because of injuries obviously to others, but um, there's a good chance that he cements his position now. How good can this guy be? I mean, yeah, he's he'd be 21 in January. He's pretty ridiculous already. He's a super talented player. We've we've seen that, you know, in the past couple of seasons. Um, you know, his, his appearance has sort of dried up last season a little bit, haven't been for a long time, you know, Klopp's go-to man, which, you know, is incredible because I think Danny would have been a teenager at the start of last season. Um, you know, to think the, the amount of times Klopp has played him, he's now made over 50 appearances for Liverpool. I think he, he played really well at Brentford, obviously got his goal. Um, I think the best thing about him is the danger he creates, the runs he makes. It's... He's a proper attacker midfielder. He wants to score goals. He wants to create goals. And he, he will continue to do that. I feel like, you know, the, the world's his oyster almost. And, well, Liverpool is because he's, you know, a boyhood fan. And, he you know, he, he's very competitive. He wants to play as many minutes and as many games as he can for Liverpool. And you'd imagine he will go on to do that with uh, performances like against Porto, where from the minute, the first minute, he dominated the game. He had a hand in all five goals. He was the, the go-to man for Liverpool and you know you can you can see his talent on display. And I think um particularly on that left of midfield, he's um that's I think his preferred position. You'll see him cutting in centrally as well when Liverpool aren't in possession and then you know he'll he'll make those dart and runs and also he's got a pass in his locker too. He he tries quite a bit for Mohamed Salah at times just to sort of get him away on the wing um so yeah it, i mean he can go very far you know he's he's already maybe with these appearances you know making a little tiny little bit of noise in terms of should have should he've been called up to the england squad um i think it's probably a little bit early for that obviously he plays with england's under 21 still and um, but you know he's he's a player with massive potential massive quality i spoke to those who, who know him a little bit and you know they they called it genius mentality and said they've never seen a player quite quite like him in terms of his, his mentality is just that elite level and um, you don't see that in other young players of his age well you do but not all of them you know it's kind of he's on the level of of Harvey Elliott as well who was unfortunately injured and I think you know that bodes well for Liverpool to think Curtis Jones could one day be on the left of midfield Harvey Elliott on the right it feels like maybe the future of, of Liverpool's midfield is already shaping up. It did seem uh, maybe a couple of weeks ago that you think that Jones is thriving because he's playing alongside Fabinho uh, and Henderson certainly over the last couple of games but actually that's not necessarily the whole story at all, Quiva. It does seem that this guy could actually slot into almost any of the three midfield positions such as the, the array of talent that he's shown so far. Like, Do you see that in the future that he is he is the guy that Liverpool build a midfield around and, and he can, uh, I, I guess, slot between those, those three roles, those defined roles that Klopp likes to have in, in his midfield? Yeah, definitely do. I think, you know, he hasn't really played as a defensive midfielder in that holding role. And, you know, Klopp just dropped him in as the number six against Norwich and he performed really well, like he'd played there for years. So I think, you know, definitely that was a, a big moment for Jürgen Klopp. He was, you know, last time and again for consistency from Curtis Jones. And he's starting to deliver that now with the past three starts that he's made. You know, he's he's stepping up. There have been injuries, so he's been, managed to, you know, work his way in there a little bit. But I do think, you know, to start the season, he was someone that could have potentially started, but obviously he suffered concussion against Norwich and that, uh, just before the Norwich game. That meant he missed that opener and that kind of put him back a little bit. But now we're seeing, you know, maybe that was a good thing for him. He needed that little bit more training, a little bit more hunger. 
Um, he, yeah, he's an incredible midfielder. I think him on the left is definitely his preferred role, but it wouldn't surprise me to see him over on the right because he does pop up sometimes there throughout games. He's you know someone who can play um, across across the uh, the midfield and even further forward as well. You know he's very talented, skillful, um, and really calm on the ball and just sort of he's got a swagger to him which. Um, you know, he just kind of, he's, when he's keeping the ball, you're not getting it off him. Um, and I, I do kind of like that that confidence that he's got. But, you know, still a long way to go in, in his Liverpool career. He, he's not satisfied with 50 appearances. He wants to make 500. So, you know, that'll be what he's aiming for. And, yeah, I think uh, he'll definitely be starting, you'd imagine, based on, on his last three performances. So, uh, yeah, I think he'll be in the midfield against Manchester City. The uh, we, there's been at least one uh, big European night at Anfield. There's been good games, and Chelsea have been there. Um, are we? I, it feels like we're sort of getting back to the point where we might be taking all this for granted again. But City at Anfield is going to be a big one, and uh, and I'm assuming that everybody is still slightly in that mindset of Jesus, and it's still great to be back at games. So um, all should lend itself to a monster atmosphere on Sunday. Yeah, definitely. I think you know for Liverpool to have fans back is massive for them it's massive for all teams but I do think Liverpool in particular really really struggled at Anfield you know unbeaten there for four years was it and then you know everyone everyone turned up and started beating Liverpool there Everton Fulham whoever it was you know records just disintegrated and I do think Liverpool fans being there almost you know they can't have a say on the pitch but they can get behind the players and almost have a say in that way and and almost like a conductor you know control control the game a little bit um, through their support and you know Man City over the last few seasons particularly at Anfield have been some of the best atmospheres Liverpool fans have created so I think you know Sunday's just going to be ferocious from the minute go you know there'll be a big cheer to get behind the team and you know the, the, they'll be singing songs all game and hopefully you know Liverpool will, will keep uh, putting in performances that will keep Liverpool fans singing throughout but yeah definitely it's going to be a raucous atmosphere and we welcome it because you know it was so long when we were just watching games without fans and it even affects just watching on TV you know you can sort of sense that it just doesn't have that extra edge with, with fans in there I do feel like it helps players perform to the best. Um, look at someone like Salah; he just looks he looks different this season. This season, and I do think you know part of that is because he's a performer, and you know having fans back is integral to to players like him. And just it's nice to get back to the match, isn't it? It's not going to be nil nil, is it? It's not going to be a drab nil nil. I know. Well, now we're bigging it up. I feel like it could be, <laughs> but no, it's got one of those four three kind of games written all over it. I think. We take it. Uh, Quiva, thanks a million. Thank you.